What is going on everybody, it's Stas here, welcome back to another video. So in today's video, we're going to be talking about the top couple of stocks and ETFs that I'm personally watching and looking to trade here, heading into the fourth week of September in 2019. I also want to go over what the stock market futures are looking like right now. I want to look at the S&P futures, the NASDAQ futures, the Dow Jones, we'll hop into gold a little bit here, we'll take a look at natural gas and crude oil as well, so we can see, you know, where, where are these headed what direction are these going in for this upcoming week or at least what direction are they going in right now so we can plan our trades accordingly for tomorrow morning which is monday the 23rd of september in 2019 so if you find value in this video guys if you enjoy the content you find it helpful feel free to go down below and hit that like button consider subscribing if you want to see further content involving the stock market trading and investing and let's get right into it starting off here with the es slash ES, that is, the E-mini S&P 500 index futures. And for those of you guys that do not know, and I'm sure a lot of you guys that follow my channel, you know this by now, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard Time every single Sunday. And of course, if you're Pacific, Central, whatever you are, obviously, whatever time that equates to you. But on the East Coast, 6 p.m. Eastern Standard, the futures market opens. So you can see all the futures that I mentioned a couple of seconds ago. And again, you can plan out your trades for the beginning of that week. You know, you can see, okay, are these futures up? Are they down? What ET trade based upon these futures etc so the S&P right now you guys can see it's up half a percent right now it's up 15 points that is pretty good that's a pretty good gap up here and what I'm thinking right now is if this leads into the morning again watch the futures in the morning as well on Monday and if large caps are up you know this could be an indication that hey we may have a green day tomorrow right so it seems like on the four hour chart here um, the ES is holding this uh, 50 SMA here on the four hour chart, which is this green line. So I'm interested in seeing, you know, are we going to test this spot? 3020, you know, 3027 is the all time high right now, um, you know, on the S&P, <clears throat> excuse me. So I'm wondering, you know, this week, is this level going to be tested, right? If we hold these 50 SMA heading into the morning, we start to gap up even further in the morning tomorrow, large caps continue to swing up. What I'm looking for is to see, you know, again, are we hitting that all-time high? Let's say we end up gapping down, we break 29.90, which is a very critical support. You know, we may be gapping down to 29.50 on the S&P 500 at that point. And if you look at the SPX here, you can see that would put us right on top of moving averages on the four hour chart here so going back to the es you can see up 15 points again right now and uh, just watch the breakup for tomorrow maybe all time highs in the next couple of days if that does end up happening if we pull down 2950 could be that level to watch the nasdaq right now is up even more <clears throat> excuse me again than the s p 500 it's actually up 55 points right now up 0.7 percent so this is actually a good technical move in the terms of uh, this four hour chart on the NASDAQ. And let me explain why. So, this past week, we actually dipped below the 77, or rather the 7870 level of support, which was a resistance a couple of months back. So, that was very bearish, in my opinion. The fact that we broke that, we also broke the 50 SMA support here. Um, you know, that wasn't too good of a sign. But overall, if you guys can see through all of this mumbo jumbo here, this one trend line actually actually ended up holding at a higher low for the NASDAQ, which is a good sign right now that there could still be some bullish life in terms of the NASDAQ. So for the upcoming week, guys, I'm looking to see, do we fill this gap back up to that high at about $8,000? You know, do we end up popping a little bit and selling off, ultimately breaking that trend line, which would be very, very bearish? You know, these are some things that are running through my head um, right now, heading into this upcoming week. If we go to the Dow Jones, you can see this one's up as well right now, up 118 points, up 0.44%, but on a technical basis right now, guys, the Dow's not looking too hot, right? It broke the 50 SMA, 
we're noticing this is kind of an awkward looking head and shoulders pattern forming right it's the left shoulder head and if this dumps this could be the right shoulder but that again it's it's not really formed quite yet but it could be in the process of forming if we do end up dumping to potentially test um, 26 uh, roughly 26 700 which could be the upcoming support or one of them at least um, right now you can see we're clearly holding roughly twenty six thousand nine hundred twenty seven thousand dollars as a support which was a resistance a couple months back in the beginning of July so that's a good sign so ultimately at this point you know very similar to the S&P and the NASDAQ guys you know if we end up dumping breaking this support we could be completing that awkward looking head and shoulders pattern we could be going down to 26.7 right but if we end up holding starting to gap up and uh, really just continue to fill up here we could be pushing up for that all time high close to it at least at around $27,400 so overall, that's what I'm looking at. The technicals right now, the futures are pointing to green for at least right now. And again, if this heads into tomorrow morning, that could be a green day on Monday. So now that that's out of the way, let me know down below in the comment section, what are your thoughts on the market? And let's get into it, guys. What are the top stocks that I'm personally watching this upcoming week? We'll just start off with the number one stock that I'm really interested in buying this week for a swing trade if the markets go well, and that is Apple, guys. And I want to break down Apple for you, AAPL. This is a stock right now that if you look at the moving averages, we're seeing a bullish cross. That's the trend we're seeing right now. The overall trend is up, right? The moving averages are pointing to a bullish cross, which is pretty much when a smaller time frame moving average, like the 50 SMA, for example, and you see that this is the green line on my chart, crosses above a larger moving average or larger time frame moving average like the 180 SMA, which is the yellow line on my chart. So you guys see we got that cross, cross which is very, very um, a bullish, a bullish cross, a bullish trend um, when that does end up happening. You know, we broke the resistance at 215, which in my eyes was extremely critical, right? Very strong resistance. We broke that. And if we zoom out to the one year, one day, you guys can see we filled up the gap pretty close to that all time high. I know we didn't get right to it, but we got to about 228, about five points below. I guess you can say it's really close to 230 at that point, right? And we got rejected. We failed to break out. We failed to break out to that all-time high. And the fact that we got rejected and we're pulling down now when we closed that 217 on Friday, this could be a blessing in disguise because it could be allowing us to get into Apple right now at a pretty good um, level of support, to be quite honest, right? Because if we do end up holding this level at 215, this is critical. And this is when I'm going to get in. If we do hold this and end up popping, you know, this could open up a great entry point. Again, when we break a resistance, that becomes a new support. So from 215, guys, ideally, if we hold that and start to trend back up, ideally, this could be an entry point. I'm thinking maybe 215, 216. And if we look at how much profit margin Apple offers from there, it's going to be around a 5 to 6%, um, you know, up to those resistances at 226. And one thing about Apple here, guys, it's kind of reliant on, it's not reliant on the market, but if the overall markets are getting thrashed, let's say we get bad news involving the economy, the, the trade war, whatever it may be, you know, and the markets drag down, more than likely Apple's also going to be down as well, especially if it's something involving the trade war, right? Because it's very sensitive to China right now because a lot of Apple's business is in China. So let's say the markets drag down, that might ruin my um, trade with Apple. Let's be completely honest, right? Because let's say the markets somehow close 3% in the red next week, 5% in the red next week. Apple beating up, beating the market at that point, I wouldn't think it, it's going to happen because it's just such a large cap stock. It just has such a big weight on the market. So when the markets are down, you know, Apple's typically down for the most part. But let's say on the flip side, what I hope happens for me to take this swing trade, markets do well, markets gap up. Potentially, if we hit an all-time high this week, that would be ideal. And that could open up a nice entry point for 
Apple, and this can literally close the gap in one week. We've seen Apple close big gaps, two, three, four, five, six percent gaps in a couple of days, five days, no problem, right? So if we do end up getting a strong week, this is going to be my number one swing trade. That is if we hold um, 215. That's going to be ideal for me. If we break 215, it's not like I'm going to completely stop watching Apple, but that point, we may be going down to test that 180 SMA, which could honestly be another blessing in disguise because that would be an even bigger dip buy. And you can see from, let's say, 207, 208, if we got in on this dip buy, you know, up to about the high at about 226, that would be an 8 to 9% upside move there. So that's very, very interesting in my opinion. So Apple, definitely the number one stock that I'm watching this week, especially if the markets get hot. I also want to talk about gold right here because gold's at a very interesting spot, guys. We've been talking about the consolidation on gold at the level of about $1,490 to about $1,500 flat, and we've been talking about the moving average resistances on the four-hour chart. And you guys can see here, gold's gapping up right now. It's up 0.4%, pretty strong gap up here with in terms of the futures. They're up about $6 as of right now, and it seems like we are testing that 180 SMA here and this is a level guys that has been very very strong in terms of it being a resistance and the fact that we broke above the 50 SMA that's a good first step the second step is obviously going to be breaking out of that 180 SMA so if we gap up guys if we pull back hold that as a support you know GDX at that point could be a potential trade which we all know is a gold ETF you guys can see this one's already breaking out of moving average resistances so if gold continues to ride up, this could pull up GDX. And what also do we trade, guys? What else do we trade? Or I trade, at least. I'm sure a bunch of you guys know about it. It's JNUG, right? Ticker symbol J-N-U-G. This is an ETF. It's actually a 3X leveraged ETF that trades based upon GDX, the one that we just had up here. And whenever GDX is going up, let's say it goes up 2% in one day, what does the 3X leveraged ETF JNUG do? Well, it goes up 6%, right? That's kind of how it moves. So if you're interested in playing some, you know, I guess you can say they're not really high flyers like penny stocks that could run up hundreds of percent, but they are ones that have a bit more upside, right? Like 5, 10% in a day you could potentially get. You know, these leverage ETFs are really, really great to trade, but be careful because they offer a ton, a ton of risk, right? There's a reason why I swing trade simply large cap stocks. I'm sure a lot of you guys know at this point, if you've been watching the channel, I swing trade large cap stocks because in my opinion, they're a bit safer. They're not crazy. They can't close the day up 80%, one well, not 80%, like 20, 30% one day, like we've seen these leverage ETFs. And you know, they, they don't really, they don't really move like that, but the leverage ETFs, you can, you can get killed overnight if you swing them. And that's why you kind of have to approach them with, uh, with, uh, you know, with, with, a plan, a strategy to really just cut your losses and lock in those profits as quick as you can, right? But JNUG, it's going to be great if gold does end up riding up, if GDX does continue to move. Crude oil has been another one that's pe that people have just been talking so much about, right? With the, with the, uh, with the attack in Saudi Arabia, that put this, uh, the price of oil from 54 all the way up to nearly $64 in the matter of a day. I believe that was last weekend, the future futures gapped up incredibly, right? Now we're seeing a bit of a retracement in the price of crude oil from 63 down to about $58 right now. We're trading at $58.79 to be exact. And that's putting us at an interesting spot right here. We're actually holding an old resistance from the 10th of September as a new support, which also puts us above the 50 SMA support here on the four hour chart. So this margin that was opened of about, let's say six, 7% from the dip on crude oil, you know, this could be opening up a nice opportunity on UWT. UWT is another one of those leveraged ETFs, guys. It flies up 10% one day. It was up 40% one day last week when crude oil gapped up, right? And just like JNUG, this is very, very risky. There's a lot of... Um, 
potential in these, but there's a lot of downside in these. And these trade, um, U UWT in particular, trades three times what crude oil goes up. So if crude oil is up 2%, UWT is up 6% on that particular day. Um, again, it's not exactly 6%. It might be like 5.8%, 6.2%. It varies, but roughly it's going to be up three times what the underlying asset it follows is up right and uwt is the bull etf but on the flip side let's say crude oil ends up breaking these levels of support which could happen as well you know, if we break that level, break the 50 SMA, start to trend into the mid 50s, the the inverse to, to UWT, which is DWT, might be a good play, which you can see it's really just consolidating. It could be setting up for the pop here, or it could be setting up for a little pop and then an ultimate rejection at that 50 SMA if crude oil does end up continuing its uptrend here after the dip that it saw. So that's kind of my thoughts around crude oil just watch those moving averages on the four hour chart that's really going to help you determine dwt uwt for tomorrow so let's go rapid fire with these other couple of stocks here Let's talk about Chipotle Mexican Grill. This is one that might not be the most flattering one in terms of technicals, but I do think that it does have breakout potential here um, if we break above 835, guys. Just take a look at this line that I'm about to draw for you all. Take a look here. So from 835 up to that high at about 857, that's the gap that we could potentially fill if Chipotle breaks out and this could definitely be a one to two day fill if the markets do well and it seems like despite what the markets have been doing Chipotle has just been doing amazing right let's just be honest at this point Chipotle has gone from 440 up to 850 the markets you know they've been going up and down up and down it feels like the markets haven't gone anywhere in the past couple of months but that's not the case for Chipotle Chipotle is nearly doubled in price over the past couple of months so I wouldn't really look at the market as being in correlation with Chipotle completely Obviously, other stocks, they are more correlated to how the market does, but Chipotle seems like it's one of those outliers that just does well even when the markets do poorly um, in any stretch of time, whether it's a one-month period, two-month period, whatever it may be. But anyway, Chipotle on the overall trend here, it's uptrending, obviously, right? We held the 180 SMA support this past week. I think this was on the 13th, maybe the, the week before that. Um, nonetheless, we held the 180 SMA. We, we started to trend up again. We broke the 50 SMA resistance. Now we're fiddling with that 835 level of old support, which when we broke beneath it, it became a resistance, guys, right? So now if we break out this, I'm telling you guys, it's going to be quick. It's most likely going to be a quick move if we do break out. Um, it'll probably be, in my opinion, if I had to put my finger on it, if I had to guess, it would probably be like a two, three day move if the markets were doing. Actually, again, I don't know why I keep saying if the markets, because it does seem like this does not follow the markets. But let's say just everything in general, the markets are up optimism you know we start to push to all-time highs we make that trench up there we try to reach to the all-time highs you know chipotle might have um, uh, um some effect from that and uh that could fill the gap pretty quickly up to 853 which again is around or 857 rather which is around a three percent margin of profit so watch that i'm watching it closely this week guys walmart is another one that's kind of similar right it's been doing decent over the past couple of weeks you can see the correlation to the market okay may the market sold off what did walmart do kind of fiddled around there lost a little bit of its value um august we sold off seems like this one actually yeah this one did sell off in the market markets did sell off. So this one's more correlated um, than Chipotle from what I'm seeing. But overall, you know, we pulled down from 118 down to 116. We're holding a higher low on the 50 SMA here from the previous. The overall trend right now that I'm seeing is up right? Not much margin on this one, obviously, which is why it's more towards the end of the video. Apple, I much rather trade Apple at this point as a swing than Walmart. This one literally offers about, let's say we break the uh, higher high, we make another high. Um, would that be an all-time high at this point? Probably, yep, if we make that all-time high. You know, the most you can make at this point 
let's say we break up to 120 bucks on Walmart, which is possible. Markets do well. You know, that that definitely could happen. You know, that could be upside of around 3%. And uh, the whole idea here, guys, is pretty much to ride it on that 50 SMA. If we were to break that 50 SMA to the downside, I wouldn't really trade Walmart, guys, to be honest, right? I like buying on the dips. I like buying on the confirmation on top of moving averages, the EMA, SMA, whatever it may be. And uh, that's really why I'm watching Walmart, because it is set setting up for a play like that. Roku is another one I want to talk about. This one's been the talk of the town. Roku and Shopify, guys. These two stocks have been arguably the hottest stocks in the stock market. Let me show you these stocks from the six-month chart uh, perspective very quickly. Roku from 30 bucks all the way up to 176 in the year of 2019 so far. That's just absolutely ludicrous, right? Shopify, um, you know... 129, 130 bucks Shopify in the beginning of the year. It went up all the way to $409, which is not as good of a return as Roku, but still, guys, nearly 4xing your money. That's like 3x about, you know, in the matter of eight months. That is insane. You're beating every hedge fund manager. You're beating everybody if you had, if you pretty much just invested in this one stock and held it for the year. Literally, your gains would be unbelievable, right? But now these stocks are starting to sell off. Roku, in particular, it's taking quite a dip right now because we got some news. Um, I think it was from Comcast or something like that that they're offering some streaming service that's going to directly compete with Roku. And then the stock guys, you can see it was down 20% this past week down to, or rather this past Friday which is even worse guys in one day it was down 20% down 25 bucks that's absolutely crazy so now this one's a falling knife I'm going to be honest with you guys this is not one that I'm looking to swing trade and I'm very confident to swing trade it based off the technicals this could very well fall down to the $80 range $75 range who knows right this could definitely fall even more based on the pattern that I'm seeing. So I kind of want to show you guys some supports to keep an eye out on and ones that I'm watching for this upcoming week on Roku. So it seems like we already closed below the 110 support this Friday, this past Friday, which is not good at all, right? We closed below 110. Um, I guess you can say the next support, it's going to be very tight in there, is around 108, which it seems like we're currently at right now. If we break 108, oh my goodness, guys, I hate this. I hate this one uh, little tool sometimes, but if we break 108, this can literally free fall down to 97, 96 bucks, which would be that next support. One of the next supports that I'm seeing here. So keep an eye, guys. If this one's trending down on Monday, Tuesday, very high likelihood that it does go to 96, 97. And I'd watch this level as a potential buy if we hold excuse me, consolidate and start to come back up, which it's going to be weird. It's going to be risky. Not really weird. It's going to be more risky with this one because, you know, there's just a lot of up and down, up and down. Well, there's been a lot of up over the past months. Maybe this is the time that it starts to cool off. So I figured I'd share it with you guys my opinion, and uh, really just my opinion right now is be careful. You know, this could be a falling knife. We could be going down to the 90s. We can be going down to the 80s. Who knows, guys? I haven't done an evaluation on Roku, but with how high it's gone, there is a chance, again, I've not looked at their financials. Don't take my word for this, but there could be a chance that from $30 to $176 in, in the matter of eight, nine months, there could be a chance that this company might have gotten a bit overvalued, guys. Think about it. The market market cap, hypothetically, the market cap could have gone from, I don't know if it's a billion dollar company, it, uh, it probably is, let me just pull it up very quickly, but let's say it was a billion dollar company at $30 a share, and it went all the way up to 176 if that's a 5x, 6x return, you know, that's a $1 billion to a $6 billion market cap, you know, if it does end up running that much, which is absolutely crazy. If we look at the market cap here, it's a $12 billion company. So, guys, a couple months ago, this was probably like a $3, $3 billion, $2 billion company, so it might just be correcting at this point to get to a healthier valuation before, you know, starting to continue its run-up. So, one more stock before I do end off this 
video, guys. Facebook, ticker symbol FB. I've been talking about this one a lot. Overall, you can see it's riding this channel that you can see that's kind of diagonal across my uh, chart here on the four hour chart. You can see it's in this channel, and now we're squeezing into this wedge this week, right? We're squeezing into this wedge, which could pop it up, which would be ideal, right? 190 bucks per share. That's where I'm looking to buy Facebook, probably more to $192 per share if we pop to the top of this wedge, if we break that resistance. But let's say we dump below the support the support of this um, little wedge, that's going to be bearish. But in my opinion, guys, I think Facebook is getting ready to squeeze out of here. Um, you know, if it holds 192, 193, that would be ideal for me to get in. And overall, technicals are showing us that this is looking bullish right now. We're breaking out of moving average resistances. We have been over the past couple of weeks. You know, we're seeing a bullish cross here, the 50 SMA crossing above the 180 SMA. We're holding that 50 SMA as a support. This is good sign very very good sign here all we need is that pop out of the resistance guys that is what i'm watching for this upcoming week so guys that's it for this video um actually let me just show natural gas very quickly because i know a lot of you guys want my opinion on natural gas overall 250 right now is what i'm looking at nine dollars or rather 0.9 percent to the downside right now is where we're at in terms of the futures in terms of being red down about two and a half cents here just watch 250 guys that's just the gist of this watch 250 as a support you know, it's an old resistance from the beginning towards the middle of July. If we hold this level, you guys could be tuning up again for a run, which goes up whenever natural gas goes up. But let's say we end up dumping here, guys, which could happen, you know, from 250 down to 240. That could be the next gap that gets filled down and there we could trade d gas which goes up whenever natural gas is selling off so guys i'm going to end off the video here if you enjoyed the video if you found value in the video feel free to go down below hit that like button for me subscribe to the channel if you want to see further content involving the stock market trading and investing and drop a comment let me know what stocks are you looking at what stocks are you looking to trade and what are your thoughts on the market i'd love to know so i'll catch you all in the next video thanks again for watching if you stuck till the end you guys are awesome peace out guys